I'm taking a road trip I'm packing light Won't need material things From this life Looking forward to meeting Some people that I admire Can't wait to travel To the other Hello, sweet spirits. Welcome to the show. My name is Suzanne Sorrell, and you're watching Evermore Paranormal Road Trip. Today, we're in Williamsport, Pennsylvania at OliviaCon. OliviaCon is a paranormal charity event that was organized by Sabrina Beakley for Olivia, a little girl that is battling leukemia. So, let's go join in the fun. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Suzanne. So thank you for inviting me to OliviaCon. Um, it, it's been a great event. We've interviewed a lot of people. And I just want to know, how did it come about? Well, um, I had actually heard that my she's my cousin, Olivia, um, that she had leukemia. And I really wanted to do something for her and didn't know quite what to do. Um, I guess you're kind of lost on things like this. Um, she, you know, with her being 12 and so young, just wanted to do something really nice and she likes the paranormal so I thought I'd put um, a con together in her name and raise money for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah I met her earlier I interviewed her and she's an amazing little girl. Yeah she is. She's gonna inspire a lot of people so you know and probably go on from here to do charity work mm -hmm. because of it. Yeah she she's real inspiring um, she's touched a lot of people's hearts and what mm -hmm. have you. Um, in Lycoming County and surrounding areas here in Pennsylvania. I asked her about the billboards. I said, what did you think, you know? <laughs> I don't remember what, what she said. It was cool or something, but it is kind of weird to see yourself that big on a billboard. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a great idea. I'm going to steal that from you. You guys hear that? I'm stealing an idea from Sabrina. The billboards. <laughs> Paracom people, nobody's done it. You need to do it. I think it's a great idea. Oh, yes, yes, it is. And um, I don't know how, or how expensive they are or whatever. Did somebody donate? No, I no. I actually, um, I actually donated the, the yeah, advertisement. Yes, yeah, so... Well, yeah, that, that was a great idea. So, what kind of things um, happened today? You know, you had today you had vendors. Yeah, um, lectures, ghost signs. Tell me about the structure of this event. Well, um, we have um, the vendors in the other room. Um, we have um, raffles mm -hmm. um, to help raise money for Olivia. Um, after that, um, the vendors will be shutting down around six p.m. and about six thirty, a band will be coming in old school. Um, and playing for us um, until 9 p.m. And then after they're done, um, basically the ghost hunt will happen from 1 to 4 in the morning. So I know. I was surprised. Hopefully we can get back for the ghost hunt because I don't think I've ever done one that late in the night, especially during dead time. Or, yeah. You know, two and, oh, yeah, two, around 3. 3 o'clock is men. Yeah, 3 yeah, o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I know. 3 o'clock, you can almost count on something happening. Oh, yeah. So hopefully it'll turn out really good. Wow. So, well, thank you for having us. And, and thank you. And I hope you have it again. And she, hopefully next year she'll be well. And um, Hopefully. I pray. That would be great to, to have a follow-up to that. So thank you, Sabrina. Thank you. It's crazy. Yeah? You, do you feel like, I mean, do you like all this attention? Eh. eh. Kind of. <laughs> Not really. Hey, hey, I saw those billboards. Now, I that was cool. I, I, I've done a Paracon myself, and I'm thinking, Sabrina, that was cool to do a billboard. Did you go see the billboards? Yeah. Wasn't that weird to see yourself up there? Like, huge. Yeah? So, I, I just thought that was really a cool thing. I don't know thinking about getting some billboards done myself, but I, I don't know if I want to see my face this big, on, you know, up there. 
So, what do you think of the Paracon so far? It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, when when you're completely well, it doesn't when you're well, we still keep having Olivia cons, right? Yeah. So tell me about, you know, we were talking when you you went to a camp. Can you tell me about that camp you went to? So it's called Camp Dose, and it's held by Camp Victory in Millville, and um, it's kids with cancer go while they're going through treatment and. Um, I went last year to help with a photo booth they did, and um, like a month later, I got diagnosed. That is just amazing because it's like you didn't know that you were going to be sick. You went to help others, mm -hmm. and that maybe have been a reason why somehow you were led to that, so that when you were diagnosed, you know, you kind of had a little knowledge about that. So. Once you were diagnosed, what happens next? And what are the what? How, how did you know you were diagnosed? I mean, did you start feeling tired? How, what, what is it? So around this is May, leukemia, right? Yeah. Okay. So around maybe May, I was not. I got like a stomach bug, and then that went away, and I got like a cold, and then I got a stomach bug again. So we went to um, at the Williamsport Hospital, and I they checked for. Um, some sort of sickness and they found out that it wasn't that and then I went back again to get some blood drawn and um, then they sent us to uh, Susquehanna Hospital and um, they said either it could have been a like a blood disorder or it could have been leukemia because it's a type of blood cancer so since they didn't have any pediatric people at Williamsport Hospital they sent me to Geisinger and Within maybe seven hours of being there, we had the diagnosis. Wow. So how, how did you, you knew what it was, right, when you were diagnosed? Did you well, could do some Googling and well, go, what is this? For many, um, like, as long as I've been on watching YouTube and stuff, I watch videos like people getting their make-a-wishes granted or stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, I kind of knew what it was, but I didn't know much about it, mm -hmm. so uh, it was very sad when I found out because it's, it throws a wrench in your life. It sure does, because I told you I, I was diagnosed with cancer myself in um, 2004, mm -hmm. and um, I was, my doctor told me I had cancer, and I didn't hear anything else that the doctor said. My husband was eight, waiting out in the lobby. And so it is scary. Mm -hmm. It definitely is scary. But you know, there nowadays there's treatment to. It's, nowadays people are treated much better than they were years ago. So, what kind of treatments do you have to go through? Um, I have only a few chemo's that I have um, right now, which is methotrexate. Uh, I don't think I really get that much anymore, but. I go through um, hedge asparagus and uh, many others, and uh, I'm just waiting right now to start maintenance treatments, which okay. will be once a month. So will, will you have, have to do that for so long, or is there a point where they go, you're healed, you're cured, or um, is it something you're going to have to deal with your whole life with the treatment. I'll so. be ending chemo next year of November. Mm -hmm. So uh, we thought it'd be a longer um, road, but uh, I've been doing really well. So um, we got my end date last month, maybe. Oh, really? Okay, great. So I see, like we mentioned before we started uh, filming, that you, you're not wearing a wig either. No. I... You know, I had two wigs. I, I was went bald myself, and like I said, I got 14 years of hair growing, and and I'm just gonna keep it growing until well, hopefully my cancer will never come back. So it's actually nice. It's actually nice to not have to wash your hair, yeah. right? And so that's really cool. Well, thank you for sitting down and talking with us. And if we come back next year, we'll you'll be up here again and talking about what's happened since then. Okay? So thank you, Olivia. Thank you. Hi 
Teresa. Hello. What brings you to OliviaCon? To, to help out Olivia. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, how many Paracons have you been to? And a lot. A lot. A lot. Kids, you probably don't have a number. Do you have a number or idea? No. So, I lost count. <laughs> what capacity? Are you usually working the con or? I usually work it with Sabrina. Sabrina? Yeah. yeah. So, you've been to a lot of them. What's your favorite thing about Paracons? Uh, meeting new people. Mm -hmm and buy interesting things. Oh yeah. I know. A lot of interesting shopping. thing. And going to the conferences. Oh, I, yeah. I like listening to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Learn something. Yeah, yeah, you learn something every time you go to one. Yeah. So what's your least favorite thing though? Not enough people. Not enough people? You need okay. more para people. More para people. And how, how would you improve paracons? Bring in more para celebs. Bring in more para celebs. Yeah, yeah well, you know, they cost money. I know. <laughs> Can't afford that. I know that because yep. I've had one and I couldn't afford the, the headliners, you know. Right. Unless they come. And, and, and don't, yeah, it's charity. Yeah. Don't need. So if you could meet one dream pair of celeb, like somebody you that I like met, and haven't met. Yeah. Who would it be and why? A Amy from the Dead Files. Oh gosh. I love I, Amy. I like her expressions. Oh yeah. And yes. how she does her walkthrough. Oh yeah, you know we we just met her um, in May, and she's not she's nothing like she is on TV. She's like she's like the most normal, sweet Aww. person ever. Yeah, so, was, she was in Williamsport. She did a case in Williamsport, but I never got to meet her. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, well, would, maybe next year if you get to um, the Para Unity Expo, she might be there again. Well, cool. thank you for giving me some time to to talk to you. Yeah, thank you for having me. So. Hello. Hello. So, what brings you to OliviaCon? Well, uh, Sabrina Beakley invited us. Mm -hmm. um, we were actually on that um, Halloween special of yours. So, mm -hmm. that's afterwards she talked to us and uh, invited us out to this charity event she was throwing. And uh, even though it was four hours away, we decided to drive anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, I hear this is your first Paracon. Yes. So, um... It's your first Paracon, you are, what are you doing at the Paracon? What are you, how are you participating? As a vendor, speaker, what? We are vendors at the convention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you don't have a lot to go on because this is your first Paracon, but I actually like that this is your first Paracon. Mm -hmm. So, what, do you, what is your favorite thing about Paracons so far in your first one? I guess meeting other people that have the same like and passion about the paranormal and whatnot pretty much mm -hmm. yeah i think the um common interests and the passion behind it um you can definitely find out a lot of people just by talking to them and uh you, you end up finding yourself on your feet for about two hours and have to get back to your post <laughs> mm -hmm. yes definitely so what what do you think is your least favorite thing as of a, today you have one one con to measure this by but is there anything that you think mm. what don't you like about it I guess it's a little cold a little cold <laughs> yeah, it's a little cold but yeah I thought about bringing a sweater but Jim said no no glad to you wear shorts know. you never know when you're inside yeah glad to wear shorts so <laughs> um, how would you improve Paracons now that this is one you've been to one and I mean I've been to about 15 or so after a while you know they're start seeing the same things and how they could be improved. What do you think? Paracons specifically or conventions in general? Well, <laughs> conventions would be fine. Yeah. What would you improve? I don't know. I honestly don't have anything in mind either. It's hard to come up with any flaws because you don't really have anything to compare it to. Yeah. But you guys yeah. go to a lot of conventions, don't yeah. you? But not, this is your first Usually. Paracon. Usually the only thing one would really complain about a convention are some of the people that show up at conventions. Mm -hmm. They kind of ruin it for you a little bit if you let it. Uh -huh. But um, it's not necessarily the convention's fault, you right. know. Right. So, honestly, I don't, I don't think I would 
really change anything. I, especially this one, it's for a good cause, and you got some uh, really interesting people here in a good, interesting way. <laughs> and you know what's fun too is this is kind of a small paracon. We can all talk like friends, like it's a little family, and it's not where we're. It's so big that we don't know people. We can go around and talk to just about everybody. Yeah. And it becomes one little family. But um, what? If you could meet one dream paracelab, paracelab at a paracon, who would it be and why? Meaning somebody on the show, somebody you look up to, that kind of thing. I already know your answer, but go ahead. I think Boy, I do. You're, you're psychic, aren't you? No. Right? No, I know, I know, I think <laughs> like, so, but maybe not. Um, I'm not going to say. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, I would say, it would, like, John Zaffis. It, oh, it would have been good. No, uh, no, it's because like it, there was a really good potential that you could have showed up today, but I guess they had a hard time, you know, reaching mm-hmm. the busy guy. So um, yeah. that would have been really cool. I think he's definitely on my bucket list. Well, he's definitely, <laughs> he's, he gets around, so you will meet him, and when you meet him, it'll fit. I mean, he's just the nicest guy. How about you? Who would you like to meet? <laughs> it's kind of hard because our the person I've it's like my. I guess paranormal investigator role model. I kind of already met him, which was Nick Groff. Nick Groff. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I would like to do like an investigation with him. Yeah, he does some too. Yeah, he's like private now. investigations too. But um, maybe Lorraine Warren. She'd be great to meet too. Oh yeah. Well, but, maybe if you meet John Zach, yeah, she'll take you or, to meet Lorraine. Meet and go to that music, that the famous museum, the museum. Which is not open anymore, but, but you know, yeah. you get a private tour. So yeah. before we run out of time, you guys recently released a new promo for Haunted Expeditions. Yes, Haunted Expeditions. Can you tell me what, about that and, you know, what's going on with that? Uh, it's like Legendary Earth, mm-hmm. but a lot less, how do you put it, a lot less uh, tedious to work with. Mm-hmm. It's um, one of those things where we'll just be on a date or something, mm-hmm. hear, overhear somebody talking about some experience they just had in the restaurant or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, you know, or we'll have an experience ourselves, which has actually happened. Mm-hmm. And we'll just hear from a waiter we talked to about it of other legends locally nearby, and we'll just set out with our cell phones and go look for the location where these things said to be like located, like a, you know, a gravesite or something like that in the middle of the woods, stuff like that. Cool. Well, whatever happens, happens. Well, great. <laughs> well, thank you guys for giving us a little bit of time today, and we'll be seeing a lot more of you, I'm sure. Like, yes, definitely. Thank you for having us. Thank you. been interviewing people all day. Um, what brings you to OliviaCon? We are here to help support a great cause as well as sponsor some events that we are planning and our own paranormal investigative team. Mm-hmm. You're, you're with them? Yep. Yeah. So you are part of a team. What is the name of your team? We are in charge of the Junior Investigating Paranormal Society based here in Williamsport. Which is GIPS for short? Mm-hmm. GIPS Paranormal. So Junior, I know you started this pretty young. Right? Yeah. So, how, how old were you? I know I checked your IDs today because I wanted to make sure. Uh, I have to, you have to be 18 or older, so yeah, hey, it's been a long time since I've been as young as you guys. So, um, so you go out, what, what, do you have a specific kind of strategy when you go out ghost hunting? Do you have a certain perspective? Well, back in 2010, we had started this as kind of like a fun hobby. Mm-hmm. And so it's grown to more of a kind of like a service as well as a uh, fundraising sort of mm-hmm. way of how we, doing our, we are doing our investigations. Um, my mother and I are both sensitive, and so we use that to when we enter a location and we pick up what is going on, and then Shyler and our other tech investigator, Austin, mm-hmm. he and Austin both try to find the more scientific approach. So we have both the spiritual as well as the scientific in our investigations. Okay, so has Shyler been on the team all this time? Have you? Well, 
well, you started. I, when I was, I moved over to South Wales for when I was in ninth grade, and, yeah, um, I moved over in South Wales when I was in ninth grade, and I didn't, wasn't sure if I believed in ghosts or not, like, I seen spirits and all that, but I wasn't too sure, and I was too scared of talking to people because they'll be like, oh, you're crazy and all that, mm-hmm. and when I met John and I talked about it, he's like, oh, you're not crazy, come join us mm-hmm. on one of these investigations, with him. and I did that, and I had a lot of fun, and I asked if I could join, and he allowed me to join him. Right. So you've got the tech side, you've got the psychic side. Yeah, you need that. You need both, mm-hmm. you know. And so now you, I know you have your own paranormal convention. You can tell me what's the name of that? Yes. It's entitled the Central Paranormal Convention that's also here held in Williamsport at the okay. infamously haunted and historic pajama factory. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw your ad for that. Where, where, Where is that? Is it close? It's actually across town from here, but not too far, maybe a couple miles. Mm-hmm. So you held it there, and tell me about that first, because the, the second one's coming up, right? Yes. Okay. These, so how was the first one? I mean, The first one was really, really spectacular. We had a lot of fantastic guests come from all over the Northeast, mm-hmm. and uh, that was very nice to have. And this year, we're having people come all the way from New Mexico and California and Texas who are a part of the Rift Network, which is a sponsor this year. So, okay, wow. so, um, so this year, some of the guests that came last year, do you, you know, I think it was Sabrina there, I think, right? Sabrina was there at last year, as well as Melissa Leeper mm-hmm. and Skip and Chris Hammond. Um, they had all participated as uh, guest speakers. Um, Howie Odell was there last year. Oh, he's amazing. Oh my gosh, he really is. Um, on top of many other fantastic guest speakers. And are the, a lot of them returning this year? Yes. yes. Uh, Howie is returning. Melissa is returning. Um, some newbies, though, that we're having this year, which we're very, very happy, is uh, Chris DeCesare. Okay, yeah. As well who, yeah. as uh, Jeff Adkins and Todd Bonner. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, Cody Desbians, who is a part of uh, TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society. It's okay. their home team. So la- the first con, um, Paracon, you had a, pa- a ghost hunt at the pajama party. Not uh, pajama party. Pajama <laughs> factory. That would be fun, too. Tell them yeah. to come in pajamas, because I've done that, too. Oh, well, yeah. we're doing a VIP doing party, uh, and it's a P- VIP pajama. pajama party. Might have to come yeah. to that, right, honey? <laughs> <laughs> you might have to have some rules about what they wear. <laughs> no see-through. Okay. No promises. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That will be fun, because I've done stuff like that, too. Like, overnights, you have to wear your pajamas and stuff. Um, and are you going to have that same this year at the Pajama Factory yes. also? Yes. So that place is very uh, haunted as well? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's in, what Shiloh? Does he, have you uh, had any experiences there? Uh, well, last year is actually my first year being in there. But uh-huh. like when we did the investigation there, I did see something that I never saw like ever before. Like I did uh-huh. see like two glowing red eyes staring at me. Uh-huh. Like I seen like a red figure before, but I thought it was like a woman in like you know like the long red like kind of pajama clothes. Yeah. I saw that before because I thought it was my grandmother, but I never saw red eyes before, so that creeped me out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, thank you guys for giving me some time today, and uh, I may have to come to this. Uh, this uh, paranormal convention. Where um, I know where it's going to be. What when is it? Like, it's going to be here. What? It, usually in the later year. Mm-hmm. Um, this year we're having it in August, as compared to last year we had it in November. Oh, so okay. we're testing out where we can have it with the the weather and see where it falls exactly. best. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for joining me on another Paranormal Road Trip. Until next time, peace out. Can't wait to travel to the other side.